What I'm going to show you today is something that we're really excited about. Uh, this is what's called a 3D scanner. Um, if you can imagine, do you have a custom floor mat for your vehicle? How do they actually make that? How do you just pick a car and say this matches perfectly? Well, they actually have used since about 2007 a handheld unit that uses lasers and scans and knows uh, how far away something is and it gives you a 3D model that you can put to the computer and then you could make your you know, parts. It's come a long way since then and now we're at a point to where there is a handheld unit that can scan aircraft parts to a degree of accuracy that we can actually manufacture them after reverse engineering it, which is a very complicated way of saying if we can't make it, you don't need it. It records them in a three-dimensional space. I can just move this around. It repositions itself. It knows exactly where it's at. Why that's important is specifically for our purposes here in aircraft metals technology is that we here at Fairchild Air Force Base work on the KC-135 tanker. That is a little bit of an old aircraft. Uh, we have some that are still flying from the 50s and they didn't make new ones. Um, so the challenge is, is that we have parts that come in that are broken in some way, shape, or form that we're not at all prepared for them to break. We might not have replacements. We might not have an approved uh, repair procedure. So they call us and say, hey, uh, we need a new one. Um, like I said, if we can't make it, you don't need it. And this tool helps us do that. In our shop, one of the big projects, we are working on collapsible F-16 crew ladders that will fit inside of a travel pod. It's not a normal ladder. It's designed specifically for the pilot to get in and out of the aircraft. Basically, the, the normal crew ladders that uh, would be used are too big, too big and too bulky, and they would need to be shipped on a one pallet space in the C-130. The idea from this stemmed from an uh, upcoming trip. So somewhere along a chain of command, I want to say it was my, my commander, had the idea of coming up with a collapsible ladder that could travel with the jet as opposed to being loaded on a C-130. Staff Sergeant Dietrich and I were basically tasked with the design phase as well as the manufacturing phase. Our chain of command said you just, you have free reign to do whatever it is you want to do and to make it work so long as it's safe and practical and economical and does the job. This isn't the only collapsible ladder in the Air Force. And we caught wind of the Wisconsin Air National Guard. They sent us a model of, the, of a collapsible ladder that does fit in a travel pod, and we took the basic design off of that, as well as incorporating a different way that it mounts onto the side of the jet. We decided to go with using the factory contact points of the original crew ladder. That way there's no question of whether uh, it's gonna damage the aircraft in any way because it's touching the aircraft in all the exact same spots. This angle up here, it follows the, the slope of the nose of the jet. It's very subtle, but it is important that that angle comes to play. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Diedrich did a lot of math and uh, he figured out the appropriate angle and I think it looks great. At this point, our, our job is to manufacture all the parts that we need. We've got the majority of the material here to do it. Um, and then we're basically into the assembly, assembly stage. This allows the 114th to be more flexible. It allows us to go pretty much anywhere without having to rely on the location, the destination, uh, to supply a ladder, which in turn either frees up space for other essential items that they can bring along, or now they have an open pallet space that's more cargo that doesn't need to be shipped, saving fuel costs, all that other stuff. My name is Technical Sergeant Eric Grease. I'm the NCYC here at the Aircraft Metals Technology Section for the 6th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron, and this is our shop. We're here primarily to take care of the KC-135s. We're part of the refueling mission, but um, on any given day we might do machining, welding, heat treating, flight line work, uh, working with engineers, our ammo section, EOD, whoever the case. So this here is a flow water jet. We basically use this machine to uh, mass produce parts typically. That's what it's best utilized for. So we can take a simple bracket or something like that. Uh, flat parts typically, and uh, reverse engineer them, uh, create a drawing, whatever the case, and then um, cut it out using uh, this machine here.
I'm Staff Sergeant Ryan Stripmatter. I'm with the 927th Maintenance Squadron. I'm an Air Reserve Technician here at the Metals Tech Shop. This is our Haas VF4, which is a vertical mill. Uh, it does have fourth access capability. It does majority of the machining for complex parts to where we can design and fabricate three-dimensional parts using CAD CAM software. So we'll use the G-code that is generated from the computer software to operate uh, controlling uh, the table movements, the cutter, speed, the coolant, um, pretty much just giving it all the instructions it needs to do the entire program. My name is Senior Airman Daniel Word from the 6th Maintenance Squadron. I'm an aircraft metals technologist here at Hangar 3. We do a lot of MIG welding and TIG welding here. TIG welding is more precise, more accurate for what we're trying to do with the aircraft parts here. For MIGging, uh, we get a lot of uh, aerospace ground equipment here. Basically, anybody on base that could need anything welded, they bring it to us and we get that done for them. Being inside the welder's helmet, it's a different world really. You get to see things that you know most people don't even know about really on a day-to-day -day basis. We get to build things from the ground up without even having a basic knowledge of what it looked like beforehand. We can just build it right there and then. Oftentimes, I feel like um, we're a lot of people's last ditch effort. You know, when things are really broken or really stuck, we're the ones they come to. You know, there's no problem too big or too small. They know, and, and I want them to know that when they come to our office, um, they're gonna walk out with a solution. You know, we're, we're not the people that steer you away or point you to somebody else, like we're the guys.